Um, title of my talk, as you, I assume, are still literate, is phrasing, uh, communicating data science through GIFs, tweets, and classic misdirection. If you haven't seen Archer, <laughs> um, you can take a nap or <laughs> whatever. Yeah, so my name is Mar Averick. I am the Tidyverse dev advocate at our studio. Um, I'm not a real data scientist, and uh, I, my job description is, you know, gruff but lovable driver, mechanic, and occasional muscle. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, if you know me at all, it's probably because I go on Twitter. Uh, I would say tweeting is now maybe only like 90% of what I do, but it's down since I first made these slides. So yeah, this wasn't the uh, only option for titles for this talk. Um, is that a reference I should get? Are you all just saying random words? <laughs> And uh, the reasoning behind this is because um, this is like kind of how I feel operating in life in general, um, and certainly in the data science realm. And in fact, I uh, like to say that I am a data scientist, which means a superficial pretender to knowledge. <laughs> um, Luckily, in college, I majored in science and society, which means I know everything about both of those things. Um, now it's called science and technology studies. So if nothing more, I'm actually a very well-trained scientist. Um, yeah, origin story, basketball. So I actually first started using R like 2001, 2002 uh, for fantasy basketball because I was really cool in high school. Um, yeah, so I was really into fantasy basketball and uh, being like 16 or whatever, I randomly found like an open source programming language so I could win my league. Um, fast forward to a few years back and they banned R in that league. Luckily, I can do some Python. I, please, that's not what's keeping me back. Um, <laughs> The bat pig, yeah, if you can see here, I've got this sticker of my dog, uh, the bat pig. Um, yes, yeah, so I was in a Lego mobilizer for like two years, got in a skateboarding accident, and um, my dog got like Twitter famous like 10 years ago. He's really big in Japan. Um, and so while I was in a Lego mobilizer managing my dog's social media account, I uh, started to, you know, learn a little bit of programming here and there, dive into who knows what, and um, I used this thing called Buffer so that looking at pictures of cute dogs didn't just take over my life um, to schedule my posts. I, they don't have, like, an affiliate program, but if they did, I should be getting cash. Um, yeah, and also because, again, the Japanese time zone thing. So that was kind of how I like, learned, learned the Twitter, as my mom calls it. Um, but when it comes to R, it's more kind of just like me learning out loud. Like, OMG, I just learned a thing. Um, and that's OK. I, so it's funny to me that <laughs> my Twitter feed is useful to other people. Um, because really it was just a way of me keeping track of the things that I was reading and learning and then making sure that I didn't try to read all the things. So I'd be like, oh, if I just read, I won't post anything I haven't read, so if I just do five a day, that seems like a healthy limit. Sometimes I go over. Um, yeah, so that was kind of what started my uh, tweeting deal. 100% selfish. Uh, remains true. But it turns out that um, I, I guess this was useful to other people. Um, Hadley thought it was. And this is like pre-bow tie photo. So <laughs> pretty OG right there. Um, yeah, I was taken aback. Also, really, he, he followed this up by saying so he didn't have to keep retweeting me. So it's laziness on his part. 
Um, yeah, and I know real data scientists are in the room, so we've got some empirical evidence that, um, yeah, I am in fact the key to a successful blog post for Edwin Bowen, yeah. So uh, my inference there, actually an overlap between things that are selfish and things that are useful to other people. Thank God. Hello, Anusha Sharma. <laughs> yes, we can be LinkedIn friends. <laughs> I'm gonna accept that later. <laughs> Don't take it personally. Um, yeah, and you might have noticed that slight non-technical burn. Um, and Hadley then like followed up with this, but then before I gave my first talk, he's like, oh, like, you know, just let people know you don't have to be the greatest scientist to contribute. So we kind of backpedaled this one. Um, but yeah, no, Lucy, who could not be here today, I think uh, put it best, you know, she was saying like, okay, the way I read this is that if you're non-tech, she's a fire go to two dancing girls trophy emoji. And like my line here was like, be the fire two dancing girls trophy emoji you wanna see in the world. But then somebody replied to that with saying, be the two girls one cup you wanna see in the world and totally <laughs> ruined it. So farewell to this slide. <laughs> Yeah, but um, so I'm really into words. I, uh, yeah, so there, there is a word for that. It's called exoteric. Yes, James Long, keeping it. Yeah, Woo. thanks LinkedIn. Yeah, so uh, I uh, am a bit of an exoterrorist or, uh, yeah, that's my jam. Um, why? Because a lot of times I'm reading things and they are half in English and half in squiggly. Uh, I actually made that first when I opened a topology book and somebody replied back being like, they're called contour lines. <laughs> That's topography. <laughs> Don't post topology jokes on Imager. Lesson learned. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you might think that this is me engaging in a bit of Aporia. It's not. I'm still surprised by the fact that people find what I do useful. Um, hypotheses. <laughs> Woo! Oh, how are we not already connected? Uh, yeah, so um, my efforts are not always tidy. Uh, in fact, a lot of times it's, you know, a bit like, uh, Jenny Bryan calls it data rectangling. For me, it's like idea rectangling. Um, so yeah, I, I have a lot of untidy efforts, albeit tidy handwriting. Do not use that syntax anymore. But yeah, so like my working hypothesis here is like, I think people kind of like seeing that thoughts don't always fit in data frames. Like <laughs> literally, please do not submit all of your uh, pull requests like this, but like sometimes words are not that useful and I have to like draw on things and put emoji there and maybe people jam with that. Um, I also post a lot of other people's content. Um, so that's like hypothesis number two, is that people like seeing that maybe. Um, but, and here's where there's like a real newcomer pitch it's not necessarily new. Novelty is a little overrated. Uh, Hillary Parker's like guide to package writing remains fire emoji. Um, and so it's a lot of content that like you wouldn't be reading it if you already knew how to do it. Um, and I guarantee you that if you're learning how to do something, somebody else is also probably learning how to do it. So, you know, give it a shout or not. That's like my last hypothesis. Yeah, so outcomes, where did this get me? Well, I uh, got to partner with Elijah Meeks making a visualization of the entire corpus of Archer, which we did code by hand. Um, and Elijah is actually the head of data visualization at Netflix and also valuable, if not unbearably so. Um, I ended up analyzing it using tidy text, so like real data scientists or whatever, like uh, 
D-Rob uh, and Julia, who write books, are like, oh, can you review this? And I did. Um, I also got involved with Our Open Sci, which is an awesome organization. I, they invited me to their UNCOMF last year, and um, I did like a video chat, and I, the first thing I said, I was like, I don't know C++, and it turned out that was okay. Um, and they also have this awesome package review process. Um, I was really worried that like all I was gonna have to say was like, yes, this is a package. Um, it turned out it was, so I did say that, but, um, it also turns out that like they knew I wasn't gonna, you know, make it more performant or who knows, you know, like experts actually need newcomers. So my feedback was like, oh, all of this warning coming up every five seconds is really scary to <laughs> hypothetical newcomer. <laughs> so uh, let's get into tradecraft. This is the anatomy of a tweet. That's not me. Uh, yeah, like cool tutorial using package name, title, author handle, relevant hashtag. It's like kind of how I roll. Um, and again, because I'm selfish, I take a lot of pictures, screenshots, whatever. Um, so this is like a tweet where I'm talking about something and here's what I think people actually see. It's like, oh, like I need that clustery bubble thing, and that's why they look at it and it's useful to them. Again, unsubstantiated hypothesis. Uh, key here, attribution. I treat my future self like I will have a traumatic brain injury at any given time. This is reflected in my code comments and throughout my life, including like my code comments to self on post-its. Uh, yeah, so I put attribution on everything. I think people like that. Um, and the tweet itself is not the content. So Jenny Bryan makes awesome presentations that are great unto themselves, and then I put them together and like ruin them into collages so that I can find what I need again. Um, and this is helpful to other people, I guess. Um, yeah, like people like to read pretty minimally, so if you can break it down to like hieroglyphs, they're into it. Yeah, so like my tweet R's, read or run. I, maybe some people tweet things they don't read. That would make me incredibly nervous. I also never didn't, like always did the reading for class and so maybe that's not totally whatever. Relatable, meh. Retrievable, that's what the pictures are for. It, again, selfishly, so I can find whatever it is I was just reading again. It's a lot easier to find like a picture of a giant paper clip than it is to find a word. Um, relevant, again, kind of meh, and real. You do you, two dancing girls, explosion, ta-da. If tweeting is not your thing, don't do it. Uh, I, what I do is not for everyone. I have um, a pretty big fan club over in Stack Overflow R chat <laughs> and elsewhere. The R Finance Conference is, um, I, I, they may be renaming it the Mar Abrick Fan Club. Um, <laughs> Likely Hadley Wickham Fan Club, but anyway, so yeah, it, like do your own thing. And the my favorite feature of Twitter is mute. Own it and use it liberally. <laughs> so is this all just classic misdirection? Kinda. Um, I guess in a weird way, this is me contributing to open source. Um, and now I've contributed in some other ways too, but you know what, if this helps other people learn things and they don't have to ask like Hadley or Jim Hester or Gabor or Max about it, then, and they can like build out a sweet package while I'm telling somebody where a tutorial is, then I consider that a contribution in its own right because I want whatever sweet feature they're writing. Um, and then I have this whole analogy about a Portuguese man of war. Turns out people are not as into invertebrate zoology as I am, so it doesn't really work. But yeah, so great book, open advice about what holds people back from contributing to open source. Can't write code. I'm not really good at this. I'd just be a burden. They already have people who are smarter than me. I've never thought any of these things. <laughs> I'm kidding. 
Uh, my first big pig contribution was uh, in R for data science. Uh, in, for those of you who can't see, uh, there was almost four R's in one of the mentions of Per. <laughs> As a result, my dog's name ended up in the acknowledgments section <laughs> of R for data science. But I was talking about this yesterday. Like Nobody wants a typo in their book and or package and or code and or life, unless it's a pun, in which case keep it. Um, so again, like, go for it. Fix typos. Um, another Venn diagram that's not about data scientists, turns out that confusion and contribution also overlap. You don't have to wait to be like done. I, I'm not a finished product yet. Um, just ask my parents. <laughs> uh, but that doesn't mean that there's no way for me to contribute in my own like weird, learning-y, excited way. Um, and you never know when what you're doing is going to be helpful to someone else. So yeah, Hadley mentioned this really cool package that works with Shiny called Pool. And being helpful and a major contributor like I am, I responded with an Archer GIF to the surprise of no one. But it uh, turned out that, yeah, if it weren't for that GIF, Matt Dickinson never would have found the package he needed. So <laughs> who's laughing now? Phrasing, boom, inappropriate. Yeah, so thank you, in addition to Pam and Katya, uh, to all these people who let me like m mess with their packages and then like hired me. They may be regretting that now. But, and thanks Jared for having me. Um, all these like real data scientists up here have been really great and uh, yeah, so that's my jam. And uh, danger zone. Oh, yeah, whoever that was, you too. <laughs>